Welcome back. Uh, before we dive into this episode, we could use some help. Uh, so we've been talking to a bunch of riggers and sailmakers and talking about the options for the rigs and sails for Arabella, because really we've got a blank slate. And that has turned out to be a conundrum because the riggers want to know what we have for sails and fittings and the sail makers want to know what we have for rigging and for fittings. And the commonality there is the fittings. So we have everything that we need for the main from Victoria. So we've got a mast collar here and the fitting for the gooseneck for the boom. We've got the other gooseneck fitting that goes on to the boom and we have a gaff saddle. I'll look at those a little closer in a minute, but we need all of those for the mizzen. Uh, so we could fabricate all of these in house and probably spend the next month or two maybe three fabricating three pieces of bronze, but these should all exist out in the world uh, in a decent volume. So what we're looking for is a collar to go around the mast that fits a six inch mast. That's really important uh, and has the fitting for the gooseneck. We need the matching gooseneck. And if we look over here, this one is in pretty rough shape. Uh, so we're going to have to rebuild some cheek pieces for it, but we absolutely need this part here for the pin that registers into the collar. So we need one of those and we can play a little bit with the end of the spar, uh, but it should be about two, two and a half inches at the end. And here's the gaff saddle. So we're gonna need one of these as well to fit a six inch mast. And we're gonna need the saddle uh, as well as the fitting that goes on to the spar. Uh, so we have this one from Victoria that'll fit the main, but we need a slightly smaller one for a six inch mast for the mizzen. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of you have a whole bunch of questions about these. Uh, so if you go to the website, uh, you'll find a section in there that has pictures of the hardware that we have uh, and exactly what we're looking for, dimensions, all of that good stuff. Uh, so you can kind of go out there and hunt and be educated. And if you find something that seems like it really fits the bill, take some pictures, some measurements, and let us know. And there's one more thing that we're on the hunt for, but let's go over and look at the rig plan and we'll talk about it over there. So we've been talking with a whole bunch of boat builders and sailmakers and riggers and cruisers and picking folks' brains about how best to set up the rig for Arabella because we have what Atkin drew here and, and we also have a pretty blank slate uh, and we're trying to fill in those pieces. So when we're looking at the rig, one of the things that we want to tackle at the near future is working on the standing rigging. Uh, so specifically the shrouds that hold up the main and the mizzen mast. And the way Atkin has these set up for the gaff is with a dead eye at the bottom. And if you look over here at the detailed drawing of the top of the mast, we can see that there's just a spliced loop that gets dropped over the mast. Uh, so doing the rigging that way is really simple. There's no uh, fittings, there's no turnbuckles. It's, it's really, really simple. You have an eye splice at one end, an eye splice at the other, and some rope between the dead eyes to pull it tight. Uh, and because it's a gaff rigged boat, uh, we can run with such low tensions and that's okay. Now, one of the things with doing this is we're going to have to um, wrap the wire where it goes around the dead eyes and where it goes around the mast and stainless steel doesn't particularly like to be closed up in an environment like that where it has doesn't have access to oxygen stainless steel also work hardens a bit more than galvanized wire and eye splices like this they work a little bit so galvanized wire for us i think would be a good fitting choice because it does like to be sealed up and away from oxygen uh, so putting the servings on it won't be a problem and we can certainly get some folks to help us out and get all of that wire parceled and served and it should last a really long time now the challenge with this the real big challenge is finding good galvanized wire it's just not as common as it once was so we need between three and four hundred feet of galvanized wire, three eighths inch diameter, and the construction of the wire should be seven by seven. Uh, so yet again, this information's on the website uh, with pictures and all the information that you need. That is in the description below uh, where you can find all that. And another thing that we're looking for with the galvanized wire is once we source some good galvy wire and we do the splices, 
When you do the splices, you end up rubbing off a lot of the galvanize. So what we would love to do is get the eye splices dipped and galvanized again after we do the splicing. Uh, but when you do orders like that, it's by your pound and we're gonna have far too small of an order to send them out. So if you regularly get things galvanized, we would love to hear from you. And if we could ship you our standing rigging with the eye splices and get those dipped when you do your next load, that would be really, really awesome. So that wraps up our, our ask for help. We are gonna get back to the regular scheduled program here and go work on the companionway ladder. But stay tuned, because at the end of the episode, we've got some big updates and some exciting plans for 2022 that we wanna share with y'all. I've got the sole in here, obviously the refrigerator. The next thing back here I want to get built is the companion way, get that dialed in. Uh, so we have it mocked up here in pine. I'm going to pull the dimensions for this and go see what we have for the mahogany stores uh, and see if we can start getting some stock put together for this. I'm going to get the stairs out of the way for now uh, and we'll build those after we get this one put together. So let's see. I got some of Victoria's house sides and cockpit here. So that was uh, one side of her companion way and that was the other. And then I've got one of the sides of her cockpit. And I got some pretty good chunks here to work with. And then on some saw horses, I have um, the front of her house and another piece of the cockpit. So looking at these pieces, you'll know there's, there's some discoloration here, which is a bit of rot. And that is because when they drilled, the bolt here is the rod. I mean, it's just fractions of an inch underneath the surface. Uh, and this one, they actually hit the, the bronze rod when they did the port light. And they've ground almost all the way through it to put in the port light. So there was a... Somebody was off a little bit there with that one. But what we're going to do is just mark where these bolts are. And I'm going to work between them. I don't want to put the bronze rods into uh, what we're building. And I don't want to hit them with any of the blades on the bandsaw, the circular saw. So we'll mark those out. We'll give them a little bit of wiggle room and we'll work around it. So I'm gonna go through and get all of these marked and then we can figure out what pieces wanna be what. Okay, so our longest is 28 by six and that will be a grab rail. Ooh, all right, just between bolts. Looking for six, but we gotta carve where the grab rail is anyways. What about the tread, 27? Well, it's got holes in it. And I prefer not have holes in the tread. Not quite there. Ooh, maybe. Pour off this side. Tread off this side. 25. Oh yeah, 25. All right, and that'll get me Starboard, cool. So I can get all three of those and some extra out of the front of Victoria's house. I think that's perfect. All right, grab a square and get these marked up a little bit better and reduce this in size and then go clean it up and see if it really is as okay as it looks. Man, that was a big tree.
Moving along here on Victoria's uh, mahogany and making the companionway ladder. So get some handles going in the first step. It's been fun working with Victoria's mahogany and trying to figure out how best to use it, working around where the port lights were. Uh, and so far I'm pretty happy with it. If you can't tell, I went and tarped the boat today. Uh, I came out this morning and was working and had icicles forming in my beard. And it just makes doing fiddly work really challenging. When we're doing things like logging or you know, big construction stuff in the winter, it's not so bad, but this fiddly detail stuff is, is a bit challenging when it's this cold. So since we have most of a hull here, uh, I just ran a line and draped some plastic and threw some tarps on the deck and have the little electric heater going. And hopefully that'll be enough in a little bit that it will get above freezing. I can still see my breath in here, but it's, uh, it's already feeling a little bit warmer because we've got, you know, solid two months of this year ahead of us. Uh, so hopefully this will make it a little more comfortable in here. Well, I'm just going to keep chugging away on this and see if we can get this built and then onto the stairs. I started by putting the big level and the handles. I'm getting those level from port to starboard. And then I had to figure out where exactly to put that step. So that going from the refrigerator to the step is manageable. And then from the step up onto deck is manageable. This up here is gonna get trimmed down a little bit farther. And there's gonna be a little mat that goes on here. And another little mat that goes on here. But those distances will stay pretty close to what they are now. And we've got it level port to starboard. And we have it tilted a little bit aft, just ever so slightly. I'm going to pull some measurements and then go work on getting this fastened and cleaning everything up because, you know, it's still pretty rough.
since these are going to be grabbed and pulled and stepped on and kind of viciously lived with, I'm going to be trotting up and down them a million times. Uh, we're just going to oil them instead of varnish, and that way keeping up with the maintenance and the wear on them down the road is a lot easier. They will also be less slippery when wet, which will be really nice. Throughout this journey of building Arabella, there's been a, a lot of things to be really excited about. But I think that this coming year, the year before we launch, is something that is, uh, is really, really exciting. And we've got a long ways to go, but, but we've come a long ways. And it's really amazing to, to be able to say that, yeah, we're confident in that sometime in the year of 2023, Arabella will go into the water. And 2021 was a crazy year and it was definitely a year of change and growth for the project. Um, so along those veins, people have been asking for an update on Alex and where he is and what's going on. And unfortunately, we're not able to give folks the update that they really, really want. Um, we respect Alex's privacy uh, as we respect everyone's privacy. And because of that, we're not able to, to give you any more update than that he is well and that his dad's over here and his dad's well. Um, but Alex has moved on from the project to other things in life, and that's how life goes. Uh, we wish him all the best and are very thankful for what he's put into the project, just as we're thankful for what everyone has contributed to the project. And there will come a time that uh, Arabella should outlive me, and my journey with Arabella will stop. And hopefully the channel's still a thing by then, and we're still following the journey of this wooden boat, and I'll hand the reins off to someone else. That's how life goes. Um, but with big changes comes big prospects, and this year we think uh, we're gunning for, for a lot of really big things. So when Acorn to Arabella started, when this whole thing kicked off, uh, there's the dream of going and cruising and adventuring and traveling, and that dream still stands. Uh, but one of the dreams also was to, to build the boat, to go out in the woods, to cut the trees, to harvest the lumber, and with my hands and a handful of friends to build a boat. Not to hire, to pay someone to build a boat, not to get a boat and fix it up, not to lead an army of volunteers in building the boat, but to actually really say, like, I built a huge part of this boat. Uh, and that goal hasn't been achieved yet, but we're getting there. You know, there's, there's a boat here now. Uh, there's a few planks left to put on and some decking and things. There's a lot, of, a lot of details and a lot of finish work to come up, but the whole creation of the boat. I think we can arguably say we have a boat. Um, so that kind of shifts the goal a little bit towards trying to get to the water. Uh, and now that we have a boat and we're getting down to the nitty gritty, uh, we're really looking forward to, to ways to expedite to the water. Uh, and one of the things that we've done to do that is to bring Ann on, who's been helping behind the scenes so that we can spend more time working out here, uh, and same thing with bringing on Ben to do the video editing. Uh, so getting these professional hands in has really, really made a huge difference. Same thing when we had Carolyn here uh, for the summer to help out. So with Carolyn in mind and all of that, uh, we're really, really hoping that in 2022, we're gonna be able to bolster the funds a little bit. And we're working on some ways to do that. We'll get to that later. Um, but to be able to hire on a full-time experienced hand to, to help expedite that timeline and get us to the water because we really could launch in sometime in 2023 which is next year i mean to say that arabella can launch next year uh, is pretty staggering and i'm still kind of shocked that i'm saying that at all uh, but it's true and to reach that we're definitely going to need 
need some extra hands and, uh, and having someone in here full time who's experienced and can work autonomously is, is really going to make that possible. Along those lines, uh, we may have the long-term goal, that thing to look forward to in the future of the launch, but every single week we bring you episodes, and that's how we've reached our 200th episode, which is coming up on February 11th. It is really um, an amazing thing to be a part of something that rolls on, and every week we, we have this pattern. The 200th episode is working up. We're trying to make that into a party. We have some things that are gonna happen that weekend, um, so on Friday in particular, it's going to be um, an open house here, which is to say that it's not a huge shindig, but people are welcome to come by and come into the boat shed in a way that we don't normally, uh, we aren't normally able to host people from noon to four o'clock. Uh, we would love to, if you're in the area for you to come by and have a look at Arabella and we'll host you. Then at five o'clock Eastern time, we are going to definitely have a shindig that everybody in the world can attend. So that's five o'clock Eastern time. We're gonna go live here on YouTube. We'll provide that link very soon and it'll be in the description, um, probably in next week's video. So we hope you come to that. And when you do, bring your questions, uh, bring, your, bring your enthusiasm, bring your stories of how you came to find us and make sure you tell us where you're, where you're watching from. And um, that public live from the boat shed is going to be like a, a really big shindig. We're going to invite a couple of people to the shed to be on camera with us. And we hope you join us. We'll also have a t-shirt campaign aligned with that, but we're going to talk about all that detail next week. And we're so glad that you tune in every week. It, it really means so much to us. Um, we produce this boat, but we also produce these videos. And we really do feel like you're a community. Yeah, so thanks for following and uh, being part of this crazy journey with us. We really hope to see you around here for February 11th if you can make it. And if you can't make it during the day, we really hope to see you for the live. And uh, stay tuned. We've got a lot of big announcements coming up with the t-shirt campaign, with some changes to Patreon, our search for the shipwright. Uh, and we'll keep you abreast of all that as it progresses. And like Ian said, we would not be producing our 200th episode if it wasn't for all of the support. So thank you very much. You make these weekly videos possible, and we are honored to be able to produce them. So we'll see you on Friday.